in the house tonight. Everybody say, the Lord is good. good. Say, his mercy endures forever. How many are glad that we get to sit at the feet of Jesus today, right? Yes. We're sitting at the table of the Lord, and God's going to prepare a table in the yes. midst, in the presence of our enemies, right? Amen. No matter what your enemy is, whether it's discouragement, whether it's fear, whether it's sickness, whether you're being attacked in your finances, God's going to prepare, by the grace of God, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, a table for you tonight, yes. right? How many are believing for revelation, yes. impartation, right? Because yes. the Word says when our mind gets renewed, right? according to the word, that's when our life gets transformed. How many are ready to have a transformed life in Jesus' name? Amen? All right, let's say this together. We say, Father God, this is my day. This is my time. I'm sitting at your feet. I'm relaxed. I'm not in a rush. Speak to me, Lord, what I need to hear tonight, because I'm listening. And help Pastor Michael. <laughs> And I know you will. Know you will. Effective, utterance. Effective utterance in Jesus' name. In Jesus. Amen. Let's put that first slide up there, and we're going to get going today. All right. What happens when we hear the truth? The truth does what to us? <laughs> Everybody say, set free. Set free. Everybody say, set free. set free. Well, does everybody kind of know what this is about tonight? <laughs> Can anybody describe this to me, right? Has anybody besides myself had to brush off that little thing that's trying to talk to us, right? And everybody say, brush it off. Everybody say, the devil's defeated. And everybody say, brush it off. Brush it off. I, you know, I didn't want to do the whole thing where there's a good thing and a bad thing because we know as Christians, the Holy Ghost is inside of us, right? Yes. And we need to take care of that devil, yes. right? There is a devil. Yes. A lot of times Christians go, well, you know, you know, uh, the devil's, you know, we kind of act like he's not there, but he is there. Yeah. Matter of fact, the word of God says in the book of Rome, uh, of uh, Peter, it says, it says, uh, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Your adversary. Yeah. And your adversary, my adversary, that means my opponent, the devil, right? He goeth about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, Amen. right? He can't just devour anybody. He's seeking the whom he can devour. The word of God says over in the book of Ephesians, it says, give no place to the devil. That Greek word for place means don't even give him a spot, Amen. right? How many are glad by the grace of God we don't have to give the devil one inch, one spot in our life? Right. He is a liar and he is defeated. Hallelujah. And so when you and I are approaching this battle and we're dealing with this enemy of ours, you need to approach it with the mindset, with the Bible mindset, that we've already won. We are more than conquerors. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're not eternal losers. We are eternal victors. Glory to God. He said, because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. How many are excited about that? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go to the scripture here. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. We're going to look at verse number 12, because I think one of the things that the enemy tries to do in your life and my life is that he tries to make us prisoners of the past. Doesn't he? I mean, he is the Perpetu he, is the, he is the one he will put repeat, repeat on every fault, every failure, every situation in your life that didn't go right, every mishap, every challenge. He's always throwing things up and he wants us to remember not the good things. He wants us to remember the bad things. And what he tries to do is make us become prisoners of our past. We can't enjoy our present. We can't enjoy our future because all we're doing is thinking on the past, the past hurts, the past failures. Listen, I don't know about you, we need to think about the good things that God has done for us in the past, right? We need to set up memorial stones and go, look what the Lord did here, look what the Lord did there. But the devil will never do that. He will constantly bring up failures, faults, uh, mishaps, and so forth. But notice what it says here. This is the great apostle Paul. And how many believe that he was a man of God, right? He was, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write almost three quarters of the New Testament. And so here he is, he's in prison writing this letter. He's writing the book of Philippians while he is in prison. But the cool thing about that, there was external walls that were around him, but inside he was a free man. Matter of fact, you see there, he was the most encouraging in the book of Philippians. He kept telling them the, the wonderful scripture there, rejoice in the Lord. And then he said, just in case you didn't get it, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. 
They were telling him that he's in prison and he goes, people put me here and there, there's people that are you know, attacking me. He says, it doesn't matter. He said, God's going to be glorified through all this thing. How many know that you can turn your prison, your situation into a platform of praise? And there's something powerful that happens when you and I, in the midst of our storm, worship God. Yes. We bring the sacrifice of praise. Yes. A lot of times people say, well, I'm just waiting for something good to happen. I'm going to tell you that already in the spirit, multiple things of good have already happened for you and me. We are complete in Christ. It is finished by his stripes. We were healed. So you can start praising God now. Glory to God. Yes. Don't wait till the battle's over. There's a song we used to sing. Shout out now, glory to God. Yes. How many shouters in the house? Yes. I didn't say how many powders in the house. I said how many shouters in the house. All right, everybody say, this is my day. This is my day. So notice this great apostle Paul. He's there. He's trying to encourage this church. He says, not as though I had already attained, either are, were already perfect. He's, he's saying, and I'm not complete yet. In other words, I'm still growing. And how many can testify to that? We're all still growing, right? Yes. I don't care how many years you've been with the Lord. We're still all babes, right? We're still growing, right? He said, either already perfect. He says, but I follow after. Everybody say, follow after. Follow. How many are glad that there's something by the grace of God we're following after? How many believe you might be here right now and you might have had a heap of disappointments, a heap of challenges that have come your way. But how many thank God that there's a vision and you got to just rub your eyes in the spirit because there's something God wants you and I to follow after. Glory to God. There's more than your yesterday. There's more than your today. God has great things for you and my future. I know that's not proper English, but it sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. He says, but I follow after if that I may apprehend for that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now look at verse number 13. How many love the word? Amen. He says, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend. He says it again. He says, I am, I'm still growing. I'm still growing. He says, but this one thing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yep. But this one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one thing I do. If there's one thing that you and I got to do, we better take advice from this spiritual giant because he's telling us something here. This one thing, he said, I didn't arrive there. He says, but this one thing I do. How many think this would be a good counsel? What he says next. He says, forgetting those things which are what? Behind. Which are what? Behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. And what, what did he tell us to do? Reach forth unto those things which are what? Before. Before. Notice the word for forgetting. I want you to see it. Because this is what we got to get a hold of. Because we are not, by the grace of God, when we leave this place, we are no longer going to be prisoners of the past. Hallelujah. Right? We're going to get set free by the truth of God's word. Amen. You may have tried, tried, failed, failed, up, down, whatever. Listen, today is your day of freedom, glory to God. Free, 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 free. Yeah. You will not be a prisoner of your past anymore. The word forgetting means this, to lose out of mind. How many know there's some things that you and I have uh, that we just need to lose yeah. Amen. on purpose? Yeah, yeah. Intentional losing. That is a good thing, right? Yeah. Intentionally lose out of mind. Notice the next phrase here. Again, it means neglecting. No longer caring for. So many of us, our, our past and our situations, that maybe the failures, our hurts, we just hold on to them and we keep caring for them. We keep petting there. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to lose it out of our mind and we're going to neglect it. Amen. So when those hurts and those pains start to cry out, we say no. Yes. Are you guys hearing me? Yes. They're going, ah, feed me emotionally. I need some help. No, 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 no. We're forgetting the past. We're losing it. Look what it goes on to say, giving over to oblivion. The word oblivion means this, the state of being unaware or unconscious of what is happening. You get to such a place that you're not thinking about it. You're not talking about it. You're not catering it anymore. It's not, woe is me. This is my sword that I'm carrying with me. My past that I'm dragging around. You might not see it, but people in your circle see it. When you come a running, they can hear you dragging 15, 20 years of hurt behind you. Amen. And how many are glad by the grace of God, the truth is setting us free today. We are going to cut the cords to the past. Why? So that we can go on into our future. Yes. 
How many are ready to go on into their future? Amen. Notice that scripture again. I want you to see it. How many love the word? Amen. How many love the word? Amen. He says, brother, I count on myself to have apprehended, but this one thing, <laughs> this one thing, everybody say one thing. One thing. Everybody say one thing. one thing. What's the one thing that he did? He forgot those things which are what? Put into oblivion, neglect, no longer care for, lose out of your mind. But Pastor Michael, you don't understand. <laughs> I'm just reading the Bible, church family. Hallelujah. But Pastor Michael, I need medication. I need pills so that I can forget it. I believe there is supernatural grace for us tonight yeah. as Christians that we can do this. We can do this. Yeah. We can let it go. Yeah. You don't have to be a prisoner to your past. Right, right. You can brush it off. Hallelujah. Put it behind you. Yeah. And when it starts to squeak and yell and cry and go, eh, eh, we just cut the cord and we neglect it. Yes. We get it into oblivion so that we're not even aware of it by the grace of God and we're not conscious of it anymore. How many, how many are hearing this now? Amen. Everybody say free. free. Everybody say free. free. He said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are what? Before. Notice the word for before. I want you to see it. Slide number eight. How many love the word? Amen. How many are getting it tonight? Amen. How many are freer already? Amen. How many are you? You are. You have permission by the grace of God to forget it. Yes. How many are glad that God has forgotten it? When God sees you, he does not see you as a, that old sinner, that old wicked person. He sees you as the righteousness of God. There is cleanness. There is, you are a new creation. You're not that old person anymore. God sees you as more than a conqueror. God sees you as a vict victor, not a victim. God sees you triumphing more, all, always triumphing in Christ. He sees you clothed with Christ, the wisdom of God. He sees you as a powerful man and woman of God here on this earth. Salt and light. Not succumber, but an enforcer. The light of this world. We're occupying until he comes. I mean, like that. He said he looks, he's reaching for those things that are before. The word before means that are in front of us. In the sight of. Many times people can't see their future. Why? Amen. There you go. <laughs> I'm getting some smiles here. How many are, you, you, can't, you can't see the glorious, wonderful things that God has for you and I. It's because all you're doing is looking back. Yeah. And you just keep bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up. And you, you're allowing yourself to become that prisoner of the past. Everybody say, by the grace of God. Grace of God. Everybody say, not me. not me. Look what it says in Isaiah uh, 43, uh, 18. How many love the word? Yeah. How many are excited tonight? Yeah. Everybody say, I'm free. I'm free. Say, I don't believe that. Believe it. Believe it. The truth. Right. This is the truth. Yeah. Notice what he says here. He said, remember... <laughs> I always have fun when I study the scriptures, today. when I get a, a lesson, you know, because I have all these notes and I kind of go, oh, yeah. and I put it there and I, I kind of, kind of jockey it the way I think it might go. And then I'm praying and I'm thinking, and I play the drums and I'm thinking, and I got to get up there right up until, and then I'm always like amazed how the Lord is, directs this thing because, you know, he knows what you need more than I know what you need. Right. So notice this, he says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Now look at verse 19. We'll just read that real quick, but that's not the focus tonight. Why? 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 Again, it is the focus actually. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> why? <laughs> why is he telling us not to consider the former things? Because I do what? And the new thing is not in your past. Right, right. Yeah. So many times we're trying to rehash the, the past, but how many believe by the grace of God, God's doing a new thing, glory to God. Yeah. New things, things that have not even entered into your mind, things that you can't even think of. He's got things in your future that you couldn't put together in your little pea brain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's right. He 
He says, why, why, why? He says, Jimmy, put both verses up, my dear friend. <laughs> How we love the word. Amen. I mean, there's great utterance on this. He says, remember not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Why, why? Behold, everybody say behold. behold. Notice the word. We're going to come back to those two scriptures here. Look at the word for remember. I want you to see it. He says, remember not the former things. And consider not the things of all. The word remember, again, this is the Hebrew word. It means to, to cause yourself to remember. Remind yourself. Bring to your mind. It's the opposite of what we just read in the New Testament there. It means to, to mark. It's to retain in your memory. To recognize. Recall the past. You're, you're talking about it all the time. And look at the last part. You're mentioning it. You and I are prisoners of the past when we do that. When we just, we bring it back up. How many are glad God is not bringing back up the junk and the stuff in our life? Right? He said, don't remember. Now, the good things we should remember. I, I get the right way. Yeah, you ought to just stand there, right? I don't have to preach that side, right? How many know you think you should remember the good things, right? Amen. When you, right? You should, right? Right? Yes. All right, okay. But he's, he's talking here about... And in some ways, he's even saying that even, let me just correct myself, that, that some of the good things that he did in the past, people get camped there and they go, well, God did it like that, that way, so we got to do it like that now. No. How many believe that, behold, God's doing a new thing? I don't know about you. I thank God for what he's doing. He, he is the God of surprises. He says, he says, so don't remember not the former things. Don't bring it to your mind, right? Don't mark it so as to recognize. Recall it, bring, keep talking about it. Again, the last part is to what? Mention. Then he says, consider not the things of old. Look at the word for consider. I want you to see it. How many love the word? Amen. The word consider again. Is that, Jimmy, put the scripture up because I want them to see it so they can put it in context. He says, remember not the things of old, neither consider the things Excuse me, former things. Consider not the things of old. Notice the word for consider. I want you to see it. It means this, to discern. It means to understand, perceive, point out, consider. So what is he saying there? And this is this, what I see this scripture saying to me is so many times what we're trying to do, we're looking at our past and we're trying to understand it. You know, we're, we're trying to now sometimes God will give you insight and wisdom on some of these things. And we thank God for that. But sometimes we look back and we go, you know, my parents were not good parents, you know, and we try to understand it. And, and, and I said it before. Sometimes your parents were just bad parents and they, because they weren't good people. And so you're, you're looking back at your past and going, well, that's the reason why I am, because my parents were so bad, and you're trying to understand this. And, and because of my parents were bad, I had bad relationships with my siblings, and, and, then, and, you know, and, I, and I didn't develop really good because I didn't have positive reinforcement in the whole home. I was brave. And you're trying to discern it and understand it, and you're thinking about it, and God says, don't do that. Amen. Let it go. Everybody say, let it go. Let go. Stop living in the past. Amen. The hurt of the past. Yes. Amen. Brush it off, brother. <laughs> Brush it off. <laughs> You're right. Now look at this. I want you to see that scripture, verse number 18. Let's look at it in the New Living Translation. How many love the word? Isn't it great? Amen. All right. Look at what it says in the New Living Translation. He says, but forgetting all that is, it is nothing. Where are we at, bro? Uh, don't do that one. <laughs> Go to slide number 12. <laughs> it just seems like a whole, it was there, but it's different. Notice the Bible in basic English. It says, give no thought to the things which are past. Let the early times go out of your mind. Okay. Common English Bible says, don't ponder <laughs> ancient history. The Good News translation says, but the Lord says, do not cling to events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Hallelujah. God's word translation says that there's a reason for that. Because if you start thinking about the past, you'll start thinking about how bad you were. And that'll affect your service right now for the kingdom right now. Amen. Right? And you'll say, well, I can't do because I'm wounded. Right? Got to let it go. It says, don't cling to it. Don't dwell on the past. Uh, good news. What happened a long time ago? God's word translation says this. Forget what happened in the past and do not 
dwell on events from long ago. Look at that in the Message Bible. How many love the Word? Are we getting it tonight? How many glad we're getting freer tonight? How many, as an act of your will, we're doing that one thing, we're forgetting? That's right. Right? This is a good thing for husbands and wives, don't you think so? How, how, many, how many marriages would be saved if you just could get this stupid thing out of your head? Stop bringing it up. I've asked God to forgive me. You forgave me. Why in the world are you bringing it up over and over and over again? What you're doing, you're setting that person up for a fall. Because you're placing an unhealthy expectation on that person instead of just letting God's grace and God's love. And you're looking to the future because you're seeing growth and you're moving forward. We're like, we expect perfection from everybody else. But do you realize, let me say this. Can I give everybody a heads up here? We expect perfection from everybody else. Do you realize you're not perfect? <laughs> How many husbands, wives can say that, right? I can say it. I don't go in the house. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I'm always right. I never say anything wrong. You know? <laughs> no, she's not perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm cool with that. She's cool with this. We're growing. Amen. And we're forgetting things. I'm not going, do you remember what you did to us, to, to me, when we first got married all those years ago? What am I doing? I'm holding her. Right. I'm holding our relationship in the past. We become a prisoner of the past. He says, forget about what happened. Don't keep going over old history. Amen. How many love that? Amen. How many love that? Amen. Why should we do this? Look at verse number 19. This is exciting. Why, 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 why? Behold, behold. Don't be looking back this way. Why? Behold, behold, behold. I will do a new thing. How many are ready for a new thing? Not some rehashed thing, you know? How many, how many believe God can do a new thing in your life, in your today, your tomorrow, right? God, a new thing. He goes, and he goes it, it shall spring forth. He says, shall you not know it? it will, he goes, I will even make a way in the wilderness. You might be feeling you're out in the wilderness or you're in a dry place as a desert. God says, I will make a way in the wilderness and I'll make rivers. Those dry places, I will make moist. I will saturate with rivers. How many like that? Notice that scripture. I want you to see it there. Look at, um, look at that in the, the slide number uh, 14, Jeremy. How many love the word? Whew, we're getting it tonight. Amen. See, what, 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 what is he telling here? He said, watch. What should you be doing? Watch for the new thing. Instead, you're not, they're not looking back. How many people are missing what God's doing here, right? They're missing the new thing because they're looking back. He said, no, watch for the new thing I'm going to do. It's, uh, it's happening already. Yes. You can see it now. You can see it now. You can see it. But some people are like, I don't know. I feel like the Lord's not helping me. And then you talk to them for a while. Well, of course, it's because you're like, oh, excuse me, pastor. Just wait. I, I, I'm going to come. I'll, 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 be in, I'll be in the office in one second. Let me just pull 20 years of, with me, <laughs> all this baggage here. What, oh, do, do we have enough room in this office for all this? Um, no. Get it out. Cut the cord. Yes. Amen. <laughs> are you guys hearing me? The 20th century says this, look at the new thing I'm going to do. It has already happened. Don't you see it? God's word says, I'm going to do something new. It's already happening. Don't you recognize it? Hallelujah. Look at that in the message, Bible, my dear friend. How many love the word? Amen. Whew, how many are getting freer tonight? Yes. How many are free to go into your future? Yes. We can move on. Yes. Somebody said, well, Pastor Mike, you don't know all the problems I got. Well, maybe you need a bigger revelation of how big and how awesome, how great our God is yes. and how awesome his grace is and how powerful his love is. Yes. His love, his grace, his mercy is way bigger than any problem you got. Amen. But Pastor Micah, my problems, special, so special. I'm special, special, special. Nope. I, don't want to be, I don't want that to be my distinction. No. Having the biggest hurt in the room. <laughs> I want my distinction to be as a, as a guy that's got a sling and a stone knocking down giants. Hallelujah. I want my distinction to be the one that jumps out the boat and walks on some water. Yes. Yes. I 
want my distinction to be the one that speaks to limbs that need to be cured and sickness and telling it to go. <laughs> That's what I'm believing for. <laughs> but wait, Pastor, you don't understand. You're a meanie tonight. You're contradicting everything that my therapist has been saying for the last 20 years. That's the problem. What do you do? Get on the couch, get nice and comfortable, and just hash out over and over and over. I mean, my goodness. I think the Lord's in heaven doing this. Yes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Be alert. Be present. How many present people are tonight? Amen. Some of you are like, you're already thinking about, I can't wait that that door opens and I'm running out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but how many, for, for the moment, you're present, right? <laughs> how many present people in the house? And how many are alert? I know you ate some chicken sandwiches, but you're alert. Yep. Why? I'm about to do something yeah. brand new. Amen. It's bursting out. How come they're not seeing it? Yep. There it is. There it is. How many believe the Lord can point things out to you in the spirit and go, there it is. You heard my story. I remember when me and my wife were, you know, I was young and I wanted to get married. You know, I was young. I was 20, ah, whatever. I was 23, 20, I don't know. Young. A few years ago. <laughs> I still feel just as young, just a little smarter, but I feel just as young. And I remember I, I dated a few people and ah, it just wasn't happening, you know. I remember going, man, I just, I just, I told him, I said, Lord, I don't even want to date anymore. I don't even want to, I I'm tired, you know, but I, I still had a desire that I wanted a wife. I knew I needed a wife. I wanted a wife. And, and, uh, and I remember sitting in the back of the church. My sister was with me and I'm sitting there and my dear wife was up there singing. And this was back in Syracuse. She's up there singing. And I remember the Lord, I, she came out there and the Lord said, there she is. <laughs> just like this scripture. There it is. There's, it wasn't in there. There she is. And he said, what do you think? I said, she looked good. <laughs> right? Right? How many believe God can do that for you? You, you can all of a sudden, there, you're, you're praying, you need a car, and you're, you're going back, and all of a sudden, you say, well, hey. And all of a sudden, God says, there it is. You need a house. There it is. You need a spouse. There it is. But some of you are not seeing it. I wish I had more purpose for my life. Well, you're, you're whining, and all you're doing is whining about the past and commiserating over it. Get your eyes off yourself. Start focusing on your future and start looking, and God's going to go, there it is. There's a purpose. There's a step. Start walking. Start doing. Yes, yes. Be faithful in the little thing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, there it is. There it is. I believe there's some there it is that are happening tonight. Amen. God's pointing some things out to you. Maybe it's just a little step. Hey, Get more faith. Get into a local church. Get more faithful. Read your Bible. Do some praying. Amen. Bring pastor some chicken wings. Whatever. <laughs> right, Jack? Chicken wings. We like chicken wings, right? He goes, I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? It's a question. It's there. Don't you see it? John, there it is. There it is. That's it. There it is. He says, I'm making a road through the desert Rivers in the Badlands. All right, guys, just one more scripture. Let's go over here. Just one more story. We're short. Let's go to Joshua 1. I mean, I love the word. Amen. Everybody say, there it is. There it is. Everybody Amen. say, thank God for the future. Woo! How many are ready for their future? Yes. How many are excited they came to church tonight? Yes. How many know you believe you should come to church, right? That's right. Yes. right. That's right. Amen. We had our dear <laughs> Jordana might have Desiree give a testimony. She was, she was like, I don't know if Jordana, did you tell her about it? Did she tell you? She was like, uh, you, were, you were home one Sunday. Oh, yeah. Did she tell you? Oh, yeah. And she says, she was watching it at the house. She says, she goes, but she I'm goes, sick. she was sick. She's never missed this church, that dear sister. And she says, she says, good, but what did you say, sister? What did you say? It wasn't good. <laughs> it's, not the same. it's not the same. Why is it not the same? Hello, Jim. Fellowship, sistership, right? Amen. You need to be here, right? Yes. There's something powerful that happens when we, we come together. We're gathered by the Holy Spirit in His name. Right. That's why the enemy fights so hard to keep people on their house chair yes. instead of the church chair. Yes. Are you hearing that? Yes. All right, Joshua, the first chapter. How many, free, how many are getting, how many just enjoying the word today? Yes. 
Now, how many remember Moses? Was he a pretty powerful guy? Was he powerful? I mean, this guy was big, right? Powerful. For 40 years, he led the children of Israel. 40 years. Red Sea parting, miracles taking place. He's in the mountain. God's speaking to him. He's writing the first five books of the Bible. Amazing. Yeah. And so all this time, he had an understudy. He had, a, he had somebody that was his minister, was there with him. And it was a gentleman by the name of Joshua. And Joshua was with him for 40 years. Moses would be up on the mountain. And he'd be a little lower, just hanging out, you know. But he served him. Served him. Love the Lord. And then when it's time for Moses to transition, how many know death is not the end? We're just, you know, all of us are going to, sooner or later, That's right. we're, we're, we're going we're to transition to the other side, right? Mm -hmm. Don't rush it. Right. But don't be afraid of it. Right? Amen. right? Hey, I, my, my goal is that when I go, it's going to be, you know, it's not, I'm going to go, I don't want, I always say, I want, I want to do it while I'm preaching. I go, well, that might be a little too much for the people in the congregation, you know. I don't want to go, what happened to pastor? He just croaked in the pew. You know? We don't want that, right? <laughs> we don't want, but it's going to be glorious, yes. right? Yes. going to be glorious. How many, how many prophesying already? Yes. Glorious yes. departure, yes. right? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so Moses dies, and he didn't want to die. He wanted to take those people into the promised land, right? right? And so... Notice this phrase here. It says, now after the death of the, Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. Notice what he goes on to say. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now. Everybody say now. Now. Therefore arise, go over this Jordan, all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So what, what's happened here? Moses, go back to verse 1. Moses, it says Moses is dead, and they're, they're mourning, probably 30 days, they're, they're mourning. And it seemed like the whole nation, the whole children of Israel, there's a shutdown. It stopped. They're all like, what are we going to do? Moses has been leading us, guiding us, directing us. He's hearing God's voice. He sees God. He sees, what are we we got Joshua here. You know, he's kind of been his understudy. He's been his, you know, what are we going to do? And it says, now, after. I'm about to say after. after. Notice the words for now and after. I want you to see it. Uh, slide number 28. It means following. It says, now, after the death of Moses. Following. Everybody say following. following. In other words, something had to die in order for this next phase to happen. This is now, after, after, following. Go back to the scripture. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, everybody say it came to pass. It came to pass. Everybody say it came to pass. It came to pass. Everybody say it came to pass. It came to pass. Everybody say it came to pass. It came to pass. Notice the word for it came to pass. It says the Lord, it came to pass. And I want you to see it. Slide number 29. This is talking about Jehovah. It's talking about Jehovah God, the existing one, the absolute unchangeable one, the one bringing into being life giver who will give evidence of being, asserting his being, right? It says, now after, go back to the scripture, now after the death of Moses, everybody say the death of Moses, the death of Moses. it came to pass Amen. that the Lord spake unto Joshua. What's it saying? There's things that God wanted to say to Joshua that he couldn't say right. until after right. Moses died. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. And this, and this, is a, this is a reality. This is a fact in our spiritual life too. There's things that God wants to speak to you, but if you are not letting that thing die that's behind you and I, Amen. you're not going to get it. True. After. Everybody say after. After. After the death. Sometimes something has to die. You got to let go. Let it go. Amen. Die. Now, after the death of Moses, God said to Joshua, Moses' minister, saying, look at verse number two. Moses, my servant. Why did he have to say that? <laughs> They've been mourning for 30 days or how long? And God has to arrest the situation and go... Well, let me get you here. Moses is dead. He ain't coming out of the tomb. We don't even know where he's buried. God buried him. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. What's the next?
words. Now, now what? Arise. Notice these words for now arise. I want you to see it. Slide number 30. And this is what we got to do. When it, once, it, once it's there, now arise. Let it go. That word rise means rise, to stand. Come on the scene. Get ready. Start doing something. Become powerful. Start moving. You can't mourn for the rest of your life, Joshua. You got to carry out. You got to become powerful. You got to continue. You got to move on. You got to let it go. You got to brush it off. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yes. Are you guys hearing this? Go back to the scripture, my dear friend. How many love the word? Amen. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, rise. Go over this Jordan, all this, you and all the people, which I, uh, excuse me, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Notice slide number, um, number 31, guys. We're almost done. You guys are doing great. He said, my servant Moses is dead. <laughs> See, if you can just let it die. Right. What's the next phrase? Get ready now. Amen. See, see this, this, that's the key. That's the key. That's the key. That's the key. A lot of people are like, I want fresh vision. I want fresh person. A, pr a purpose and passion. Well, just, and as I'm talking to them, you all know what needs to die. I'm not the one going, I, you know, unless the Lord chose me by the Spirit. You guys know there's something that you've been dragging and clinking around for years. And you're wondering why. Why do I feel not as fulfilled as I should be? The key is you got to let it die. And then as you let it die, what do you do? You don't sit there and go, oh, it's dead. Now, what am I going to do? What's the purpose of my life? Because all my life I've been devoted to mourning and, and catering and mentioning and caring for this thing. No, the first, it's dead, it's dead. And then you turn yourself around and you get ready now. Yes. Amen. You, that's what faith is. You get excited. And even if you don't know anything, even if you don't see nothing, you put the biggest smile on your faith, faith and you start prophesying. Thank you, Lord. For my rivers. Thank you, Lord, for the way in the wilderness. Thank you, Lord, for the new thing. Because yes. I'm, not, I'm not looking back no more because I'm doing that one thing. Yes. Yes. Look at that scripture in closing in the Message Bible, Jeremy, uh, verse number 19. Actually, just do both of them together. One and two. Oh, excuse me, one, verse one and two. How many love the word? Amen. How many are thankful? Amen. How many believe there's grace to die? Amen. Somebody say, I don't believe that. Yes, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yeah. But the life that I now live in the flesh is not me, but it's a, the Son of God who lives inside of me. There is a grace to die. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just like there's a grace to live, there's a grace to let go, there's a grace to let things die. Yeah. Yeah. Out! Why? Because God's got resurrection power, and there's things that are going to happen in your life and my life yeah. Yeah. if you'll just let it yeah. go. After the death of Moses, excuse me, the death of Moses, my servant of God, God spake to Joshua, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Ain't going. <laughs> How many are hearing the Lord saying, Get going. Giddy up. Come on. Get going. Get moving. Get me. Come on up here, Josiah. Hallelujah. Get going. Get going. Get going. You're like, you might be here tonight. You're like, well, I wasn't expecting this kind of a service. I mean, whoa. I was. I was, <laughs> I was too. But I believe the Lord, this is the word from the Lord for us tonight as a church family and for those that are watching. Because God's saying to us, it's time to get going and it's time to cross over our Jordan and it's time to go into our promised land. Amen. Amen. There's things that God has for you and I, right? That, that are not on this side of Jordan. It's on that side of yes. Jordan. Yes. Amen. Just start playing something, Josiah. I feel good. You just, everybody, just bow your heads here tonight. You guys are doing awesome. We just thank you, Lord. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do something. Seal it in our hearts. Seal that word. Seal that promise. Seal that good thing in us. Everybody say, God is good. Say his mercy endures. Right now, we're going to just let that word get sealed in our spirit, sealed in our heart, sealed in our mind. Right now, we're just going to just op activate the word. We're going to just do it. Because we're going to just let go of those things. Right? If there's something in your life right now, you're like, well, Pastor Michael, that, that's been holding me back. It's just, it's just like a monument. It keeps drawing me. It's a hurt. It's a pain. It's a failure. 
to thoughts and it's, it's holding you, it's making you a prison of your past. I challenge you tonight, right now, by the grace of God, to say this together with me, say in the name of Jesus, I'm letting go, letting go. No, I'm not gonna mention you no more. I'm not gonna care for you no more. I'm gonna neglect you and I'm gonna put you out of my mind. I'm gonna put you into oblivion. I'm not gonna think about it no more. And when those thoughts come to my head, I'm gonna resist it like a bad, bad disease. It's just gonna resist it. It's not, not God, I'm not gonna take it. So Father, I just thank you right now. These precious people, they're doing that. They're letting go of their past. They're doing that one thing that the word says. And right now, right now, right now, by faith, I want you to start looking up. I want you to just start reaching forward. Say, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for the new things. I thank you, Lord, for the there it is, for those open doors, for the new things, for making a way in the wilderness, a, a river in the desert. Lord, you're just right now, Father. I'm, I'm just open right now for the miracle of the future. Thank you, Lord, for the miracle of the future. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we just sing the chorus of He Reigns? It's all God's children. Glory, glory, hallelujah, He Reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, he reigns. He reigns. It's all God's children singing. Lord, Father, I just, as a, Father, as an under-shepherd, Father, I just thank you, Father, for the grace that these precious people have to move forward into their future. And Father, I just thank you, Lord God, that you're showing scales are coming off people's eyes. There's a wind behind them instead of the blast coming in their face. Thank you, Father, for the new things, that the, there it is. Lord, we honor you. We thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord Father, that this word, your word, your holy word, will never return unto you void. But it's accomplishing right now in the hearts of these precious, in my heart too, what you set out for it to accomplish. Lord, we're doing it. We're pressing into our future. And we're brushing off those lies. And we're leaving it in the past. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you guys. You guys are up. Sunday morning. Come.